Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Deck Techs, where together Yahoo Esports and I are exploring all of Journey to and Grow, the new expansion release for Hearthstone in April 2017. Today, we're going to take a look at Mage and one of my favorite decks that's come from the expansion based around Quest Open the Waygate. Dog was the first player to really showcase the power of Open the Waygate by using an infinite chain of fireballs with Archmage Antonitis and Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now I know what you're thinking, you only have two Sorcerer's Apprentice and fireball costs four traditionally. How are you supposed to be able to cast infinite fireballs? Well, you utilize the new card Molten Reflection, which is choose a friendly minion and summon a copy of it. And while it seems like it's way too much mana to spend all in one turn, that's where Open the Waygate comes in. It gives you a quest, cast six spells that didn't start in your deck, that includes the coin. You can start from going second. And your reward is Time Warp, a card that lets you take an extra turn. So what you end up doing is dropping Open the Waygate on one turn with a, the Sorcerer's Apprentice and chaining it. You, you usually play one Sorcerer's Apprentice, the second Sorcerer's Apprentice, Molten Reflections for two mana, and then the other one for one mana. And then you can play Open the Waygate for two mana, and really something really cheap. And then you, the next turn that you're able to have is to play Archmage Antonidas. Then you cast Infinite Fireballs, which is exactly what you want to be doing because this deck is awesome. People even call it the Exodia Mage harking from the days of Yu-Gi-Oh, where Yugi would have unleashed the power of Exodia and defeat Kaiba and set him free from the darkness while freeing his grandpa and simultaneously proving the power of friendship. Some of the interesting cards about this deck is how much do we want to put cards from outside of our deck into this list? So people might be looking and they're examining, saying, why do you only have one babbling book? It has a random mage spell to your hand that's not in your deck. Why wouldn't you want to have two? Well, the thing about this deck is that you need to be able to survive a lot of the pressure because your opponent's not going to let you gather all the resources for this unstoppable, literally infinite damage combo. So what you're going to need to do is really thrive off of the freeze effects that you have. Frost Nova is one of your most powerful tools, if not the most powerful because it's only three mana. You have Blizzard to stall. You have Doomsayer to help destroy your board. Oftentimes, comboing Doomsayer and Frost Nova with Blizzard will give you a lot of times to stall. Uh, there's also times where you can get away with just playing an Ice Barrier. If you feel like you are dying, but you don't need to immediately play Frost Nova if there's five or six power on the board, you can just play one single Ice Barrier, pass a turn, and save your freeze for another turn later. Now the most important thing about this deck is card draw. As you can see, there is a ton of ways to draw cards from your deck. There's the new card, Archonologist, one of my favorite cards from Mage in this expansion. Battlecry, draw a secret from your deck. Very specific tutor effect, that's what we call it in card games. We're able to draw a very specific card that you want from your deck at a time. So Archonologist will always guarantee draw Ice Block or Ice Barrier. Ice Block, of course, is one of the most important cards in this deck, primarily because the entire deck is about how many turns you have left. Open the Waygate is an extra turn. Ice Block gives you another turn. Two Ice Blocks give you another turn. And sometimes you're even able to discover more, either through Cabalist Tomes, which adds three random mage spells to your hand, and Primordial Glyph, which not only discovers a spell, adding to the Waygate counter, but also reducing its cost by two. So if you get an Ice Block, you can get it for one mana. It allows you to have an ability to discover a spell and reduce its cost by two while simultaneously ticking up the counter of the Waygate by one. That allows you to do really funky things like squeeze in Ice Block for one in the scenario where you need to survive just an extra turn but you don't have much mana left. Now, a lot of people might be wondering why there's things like only one Frost Bolt, there's no Fireballs, there's not a lot of ways to do actual damage. It's because we don't really care about killing our opponent through a traditional burn way. A lot of times people used to look at Freeze Mage and said, well, if I can't actually win the game uh, through a big one turn kill or two turn kill, I just, just burn them down over multiple turns. This deck doesn't really do that. It is one of the primary weaknesses of this deck. The strength of this deck is that it's able to withstand pretty much any kind of board pressure past turns three to five. Uh, if you're able to survive that early phase of the game, you're able to just stall, 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 and your opponent, no matter how big, they could play 100, 100 minions, and they still wouldn't be able to kill you because you can Frost Nova Doomsayer, stall them out, or even more, depending on what you get from Cabal's Tome and Primordial Glyph. 
The primary weakness of this deck is the fact that it can just die to early game pressure because you're so busy setting up draw and so busy setting up freeze and even your ice block that you don't have enough life to play with. Your opponent's always threatening to pop your ice block and from there you're just constantly going to be under the threat of dying. Another big weakness I see in this deck is that there doesn't seem to be that many alternative ways to win the game. Outside of the Antonitis, Fireball, Infinite, Sequence, Exodius combos, you don't really have another way to primarily win the game uh, through just burning your opponent. For example, there used to be a matchup with Freeze Mage versus Zoo, where you are okay using Fireballs and Frostbolts and Ice Lances on minions because they'll life tap themselves down within Burn Rage. You don't really get a lot of that scenario with this deck. You don't have Pyroblast, you don't have Fireball, some of these really big power swinging cards like Firelands Portal that does damage and gives you tempo. A lot of times you're gonna be trying to survive and if you don't really have uh, the primary way to win, say you have to break up pieces of the combo with Sorcerer's Apprentice and Antonitis, you're gonna to have to find a different way to win and that often relies a little bit upon your opponent not having the proper removal, such as playing Antonitis and hoping your opponent can't deal with it, or having an extra turn and just killing with Sorcerer's Apprentice and a couple of fireballs as opposed to infinite. So the most important thing about mulligans is of course keeping the quest. You don't really want to throw away open the way gate from your opening hand. You really need that even if you're going first and you have less cards. But the way you can compensate for that is the absurd amount of card draw into your deck. Loot Hoarder is a very good candidate. Blood Mage Thanos is okay. In fact, I was not really loving this card in general because you don't really have that much burn. Uh, you have Frostbolt and Blizzard and whatever you get off books and glyphs. Maybe not as necessary. You can even replace it with Novice Engineer depending on how you feel the deck is performing. But it's a good early game keep. Doomsayer, very important if you feel like the matchup is very aggressive. So if you're going up against Hunters, you're going up against Zoo Warlocks, you're going up against Pirate Warriors. Having a Doomsayer can often just straight up win you the game if your opponent can't recover from the amount of tempo loss by passing. Another thing to consider is that you only have one Frostbolt in the deck, so if you feel like the matchup is extremely aggressive and you already have existing card draw into your hand, you have Open the Waygate, you have loot, two Loot Hoarders, and you have a Frostbolt, yeah, maybe it's not necessarily that bad of an idea to keep uh, the Frostbolt so you can survive the early game pressure. Sometimes Doomsayer doesn't even activate based off how much pressure people have and damage with Pirate Warrior. So just be very careful and mindful that you might need that Frostbolt early on to survive. Uh, another thing I like to do is to toss Frostbolt and Doomsayer together on turn four, setting up for turn five, which can be extremely pivotal. Turn five allows you to develop a card draw with Loot Hoarder and a three mana card like Ice Barrier, Ice Block. It allows you to play Cabalist Tomes. So, you know, really try to keep in mind the power turns, which is turn five onwards with this deck. And if you're able to get to a certain point, you can just start chaining freezes. And it doesn't really matter what your opponent does, you just assemble the unstoppable combo. <laughs> as I delete Cabal Stone from my deck. Just get back in there, buddy. Some important synergies with the deck include Doomsayer plus any freeze. We mentioned Frostbolt, we mentioned Frost Nova. You know, Blizzard's also an important one, too. Uh, another important synergy is the fact that Sorcerer's Apprentice discounts everything. So sometimes, in a lot of cases, you have to just go for broke. If you have two Sorcerer's Apprentice and a Cabalist Tome and your quest is almost done, has four or five spells, sometimes you just gotta go for it. You drop double Sorcerer's Apprentice, you drop uh, maybe one Molten Reflection, and then maybe just go for the Cabalist Tome and hope that you can get a playable spell so that way you can activate the quest, get the extra turn, and hope that you draw Antonitis. You never know. If you have three Sorcerer's Apprentice on board, then you're able to Arcane Intellect for free, and then maybe you draw Antonitis the following turn. Never give up hope. This deck always has a chance. If there's one more turn, that's one more chance to win. The deck is relatively cheap at 7,000 dust currently with uh, Blood Mage Thanos, but you can also replace Blood Mage Thanos with a Novice Engineer. The Novice Engineer is very cheap. It's a basic card, so you get it for free. And you know what? Now all of a sudden, 6,000 dust. And 6,000 dust, very reasonable to basically tilt your opponent off the face of the planet by using Archimage Antonitis and an infinite chain of fireballs. Cabal's Tome and Primordial Glyph are epic cards, which you may or may not have. If you don't have it, it's really painful because those are cards that add additional cards that are not from the deck. But you can put another babbling book in. It's very cheap at a rare compared to an epic. Uh, or if 
you are feeling, you know, a little resourceful, say you happen to have a Burgly Bully instead of a Cabal's Tome, that's an interesting way to get cards from outside your deck. It's a coin, which doesn't count as a, a really powerful card, but it's a card nonetheless uh, that's not from your deck. Not to mention that the extra coin, in the case of Antonitis, helps you scrounge together some fireballs if you need to be very defensive and win the game through an alternative win condition. So remember, the most important thing is maintain the board. Try not to let your opponent aggress on you at all. If you're taking 10 damage and you're at 20 health, yes, you're at 10 health, but don't even let them get that damage in because if, they're, if you're at 10, they can threaten to kill you with a lot of damage follow-up. Try to save your freezes if you can. There's a lot of scenarios where you don't necessarily need to freeze the board if it's only five or six health and you're in the high 20s. It's very relative case by case, but really try to explore with danger. The whole point and the thrill of this deck is that you're yo-yoing constantly with how often you're gonna die versus how often you're gonna barely survive by saving your resources. So experiment, get greedy, and then learn how to scale back. And when you do, you'll be fireballing your opponent to a kingdom come. Well played. Hey Junior Explorers, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out some of the other content. We've got lots of other Hearthstone stuff going on here on the Yahoo channel. Maybe it'll even help you survive.